Today, I have an opportunity to be at an agency in New York City that has a very diverse population of people that they treat and care for. Uh, the most important factor in a person's life when you give a family member up to an agency to take care of your special needs family member, that they have an understanding of the diversity of need for each different child. So this takes a lot of training and, and a lot of most important, I would say, an affection and love for people to be able to help other people. And these are special people that do this work. They're called direct caregivers. Today I'm with Rob from an agency in New York City. And uh, I'm going to give Rob an opportunity. There's so many opportunities that we've had in making people aware of what direct caregivers do, service providers. I think it's important that we have service providers to speak for themselves and to define what their job is and why they do it. Okay, Rob, my pleasure to be with you. Thanks. Tell us a little bit about how many years have you been doing this? Oh, I've been in this since 2005. Um, how did I get into it? it just, I happened to see one of my friends doing it. And um, we, he was in a Barnes & Noble. He was uh, taking care of his group. And I was at, I had just come from an interview from some, somewhere else. And um, I bumped into him. What are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm taking care of these guys. I'm like, oh, how, how do I, that seems like something I can do. I mean, I have a, I have an, I have a cousin who's autistic myself. And um, I just like, I'm a very big people person. And working with people is better than, for me, being behind a desk. And, uh, I, you know, I did well in the interview. Let me ask you a question. What kind of training did you have to have to be able to qualify to take care of another person? Well, I came into this with an educational background to uh, teach reading, um, like the academic skills. So I had a, I had a BA in um, English. So I had my college degree. And then after that, the training went into like, uh, we, we, we learned skip, which is like it just restraining stuff, just so that they don't hurt themselves. Um, then there's also first aid, CPR, and um, yeah, that's and then also for those who give medicines, we do we do AMAP training, which is like a few weeks of memorizing what to do and what not to do with pills. Absolutely. Because you don't want. It, so. Well, it's a responsible. What about feeding tubes? Uh, I, our population, the one that I'm taking care of, we don't have that. Um, under our, I, I don't do residential residential either. So that's more like a residential thing, but um, we all we learn about also uh, like how to chop food, consistencies of food, because you know something right. like you bring Absolutely. a feeding tube, not everyone can digest, swallow, or have the proper you know. So you have many talents that you have to acquire, and uh, yeah, you you have to re you have to reference you know to your training every now and then, yeah. Now, <laughs> you uh, you enjoy your job. Yes. What's what's the reward to your job? What's the basic, most important reward that you get? Well, I take a lot of this home with me. I mean, uh, my wife tells me, it's like, uh, well, just real quick, I, I'm one of those guys who doesn't call out sick even though I'm supposed to when I'm feeling pretty bad because I know that the guys are relying for me, are, they, they rely on me to be here. You know what I mean? There's a consistency is key over here. Your quality, their yeah. quality of life are in your right. hands. Um, and the best reward you get? Is well, like I said, I take a lot of it home. Um, I, I go home. They watch wrestling. A lot of them watch wrestling, so they drag me back into it. So I, I go home. I watch it. Come back home, and I start talking to them about it because that's and I start enjoying it myself. Um, my guy right here, Joe, he loves music, loves music, and I just have that. Like, that's my my second gig, is like DJing, and um, and also producing music, but. This guy is like vast knowledge. He always keeps me up to date on um, on what comes out. Like he he knows all the new pop songs, and I'm I'm kind I'm kind of old. I'm what they call old, you know, mid mid thirties. Oh, that's old. Yeah, up to yeah. Compared, you know. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> but um, no, no, he keep. I mean, and that's just. I'm not saying that right, I use me, that, but I I have a good. It's like I have a really good rapport and just relationships in general. Like uh, you. I take that. I take a lot of their mannerisms with me. The, the things that they say, I end up quoting them at home. Um, it's like, why they become you, part of your yeah, life? Yeah, become part of your life. And I, like I said, this has been 11 years. So, my friends say, 
wow, you re like you really love doing this. I've I've also been offered different positions in different places. I actually I've also I've also been offered uh, positions here like desk jobs that I've turned down consecutively because it's not in the field. Um, and one another one of my specialties is going outside. We we, we go on a lot of trips. I was take a uh, stand on ferry. Um, I try to go to Jersey. I try to take them as far out of New York City as I can, as far as they'll let me. Because um, what I what I witness is a lot of these guys have a sedentary lifestyle when it, when it, when, it, when it's time to leave the program, and I want them to live rich lives. That's good. It's yeah. important. What you really do is focus on what the kids can do, not what they can't do. Right. Yeah. And uh, well, it was interesting. I I know you have your story, but. When I go, I deal with adults, and these 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 are um, adult. A lot of them I deal with adult males and also females too. But like if I go home, my mom's like, "How are the kids?" I'm like, "No, they're not kids. They're adults. They're, they're men. People. Yeah, they're men. Um, you know what I mean?" And and, I, and that that sort of language, like you personally, you internalize it. Like, hey, that's my, that's my guy. You know, that's my dude. I mean, it's so, you got a very diverse group. Everybody's yeah, we have different. we have. Uh, well, as far as training goes, I'm also bilingual. So you know, we have we have a very big Latin uh, American community. We also have African Americans, and we also have some Caucasians as well. But I mean, learn knowing Spanish helps a lot in this field. Oh, that's good. It's important. But just I, mean, I think. Let me ask you a question. Let's talk about. I know we say, and I feel from the feedback that I get, is that people are overworked, Thank you. Overworked. underpaid. And, and the reality is that they have to have second income to just try to pay their bills. What do you feel in regard to? Especially in New York City, I mean, living in New York, number one, but also with this field, uh, they, they say the irony is the less you work, the, the less hands-on you work, the, the more you get paid, which is... That's interesting. Which is crazy, yeah. You, yeah. So you get to a desk and you get paid more, but they're still out here. and. I mean, you, when you start as a direct care worker, you, you know, you're not like a manager or a supervisor, but you're getting your hands on, you know, more. You know, you, your day is more unpredictable than someone who's at a desk, really. And then, so yeah, I, for me, I mean, yeah, definitely, like credit card bills, <laughs> stockpile, uh, I, yeah, they do. Right. Um, uh, you got to pay for food. I mean, you can't. You can't qualify for stamps or nothing. You got to pay for food in New York City. Uh, well, I, and, oh, and I got a kid, so the answer the answer really is that, and everybody that I know in this field basically, as I said, they're underpaid, overworked, and the yeah, the reality is the reward that you're saying to me is that you are the passion, the your uh, you have a love for the people yeah. that you're taking care of yes. because they become part of your life and your right. family's life. And that's so important, but you know, how are we going to attract good people, trained professional people, when people are flipping hamburgers, making more money than you are, taking care of loved ones of other people and their families? I definitely think this work, um, you have to have a certain passion. You have to have a love of people, you know, um, and just, and you also have to have patience. Well, you and, know what? God's good. God's. God's touching you and giving you a message, but you know what? You have a smile on she your does. face. You have happiness. I know so many people that have jobs and they hate their jobs. You know what? Yeah, that's that's my thing. I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have a cholesterol problem. Um, I go to I go to my doctor. I mean, I, we do get health we do get um, health insurance. It's not the best, but when I go, he's like, you know, your heart's good. You, you know, you love your work. He's like, are you, he's like, are you gonna get it? He asked me, are you gonna get a desk job soon? Because you are, you know, you are getting old. And I'm like, nah, I, I want to stay in the field. Like, you know, we go play basketball. I mean, these things keep us young. I mean, this is it. it yeah, um, sometimes yeah. there are challenge. There's challenge. I mean, there's challenges with everything you do. You know, something can happen. But you know, like I said, consistency is best over here. And uh, I, I, when something does happen. For me, even even when it's challenging, you, you learn more about yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I thank you. I thank you for what you do. Thanks. And I, You're and welcome. I, and I appreciate the fact that I feel secure, and parents and families have to feel secure to know that they have somebody who cares about their And their getting to know their families, too, is also Absolutely. good. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, thank you for everything. Thanks a lot, Harvey.
All right, you're welcome. Sure. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, I, I'm just wondering if it makes sense to ask you. You really stress that consistency is important, uh, and it is. What do you think about uh, consistency is important, but, but so many people change jobs. I mean, you're one of the few who's really staying. And, and, and it affects... Uh, can you talk about that for a minute? Okay. I'll cut it in. I All can, right. I can cut it in. Just the consistency is important, but people change jobs because they I got you. Hated. Let's go. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are leaving the, the field because they can't pay their bills. But how devastating. I know how devastating. In your sure. eyes and in your mind, that when somebody who gets to know the, the people, the residents, and then they leave, it's like another loss in their life. It is. It feels like a family loss. Uh, I'll tell you this. I've, like I said, I've been here. I'm one. Of, I guess I'm one of the few who have been stubborn enough to stay here from 2005 to 2016. Yeah. Um, and within, like, let's say, two or three year blocks, I've worked with different teams. Because this is also very a big team environment. It's different personalities coming together to form a cohesive unit to serve others, right? And there's a chemistry. And I've worked with like maybe like six or seven different chemistry, diff different teams. It's like superhero teams. And we, um, so when someone leaves, we have to make the announcement and you get like a blowback from either like a week to a month of uh, just like regressive behavior sometimes. Oh, absolutely. And just, they, they, I mean, my guys get mad. You know, a lot of families don't attend our special children, especially in residential situations. Right. And it's, it's a loss and they do feel it. I mean, some people can't speak, and they can't show, but their emotion does come out in their You'll behavior, see it. and you yeah. will see it. That's why every direct caregiver is so important. Yeah, and just having incentive to stay, I mean, okay, yeah, you can have, I mean, I, I've been doing the music thing on the side. That's my gig, and, I, and I've been fortunate enough to have that, you know, like, sub, you know, it, it's like, you know, what's that word again? It helps me out. Uh, and supplemental supplement it's supplement it's my supplemental income and I'm, I've been lucky enough to have that but that fluctuates that's 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 not a steady you know feel but um there's some people you know who can't oh and let me tell you uh, from my life experience about music yeah. I went to a facility where they had people on stretches mm -hmm. and they couldn't move and they were taking physical therapy and I brought in a music program and <laughs> They had a success they were that, they were to working, move, right? that they were working on to try to have an individual move. And he heard the music, and all of a sudden, he started to rock, and they, they were so surprised. But music is, mm. is, is something that mm. every person, every human being really has pleasure. Music and swimming and, and yeah. water. <laughs> Water's good, yeah. I, I, I DJ the parties for the guys here, too. I play, oh, and just, like, they liven up. I, and then they're not, like... That knowledge, a lot of the times, is so encyclopedic, and you mm -hmm. there's so much to learn. That's what I mean. Like I got to say, my guys, uh, right, Joe? Yeah. What do you like about music? I like Ariana Grande. See, he he stays up to date. I wouldn't have known who she was. I like Christina Aguilero. What can you play? What instruments can you play? The keyboard. Yeah. But you see, that's so good because. This is another one of the focuses that I have and emphasized for so many years, to focus on what our children can do, not what they can't do. Some people are deficient in some skills, but they're geniuses in others, yeah. That's like Asperger's. I, you know what, I'd have to share with you that I'd like that on the beach, and I've been doing that for a lot of years. Oh, oh yeah, okay. This year, I had a young man in the spectrum right. with autism, and he could run, he could swim, and he tried to get a job, and he was certified. Mm -hmm. but because he looked a little different, he couldn't get a job. So I got a job at a beach mm. on Long Island, and I said, I'll take this job and I'll open your beach, but I have to have this young man with me. And we had the best summer. Wow. And this, this young man is now in the second year of college. But he, he wrote a little note thanking me for the best, happiest summer he ever had. And you see, that's all because somebody gave him a chance to be able to show his abilities. Yeah, you. I mean, we we'll, we have employment programs doing the same thing. We do this thing called discovery, uh -huh. and we spend a lot of time with them learning, you know, what they can do. I mean, just to go back into the physical aspect of it, I have one of my guys. He can, it was just amazing when he gets a basketball. He can land it, 
into the basket from anywhere. And I'm like, okay, I'm horrible at that. Yeah, right. I'm horrible. Then Nick should look into this because <laughs> they could use some help. <laughs> <laughs> this year. Anyway, thank you again. Thanks and a lot. You're welcome. Helping us to make people aware of the wonderful people that take care of our families. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Come on, Joe. All right. Yeah.